Chris, we end every On Purpose episode with a final five. And these ones have to be answered in one word to one sentence maximum. But I always change the rules. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll try. Uh, Chris, what's the best advice? And I'm guessing it's going to be from grandpa. But what's the best advice you've ever heard or received? Uh, never delay gratitude. I was mm. actually from my college coach, Skip Prosser. Mm. Walk, walk us through that, actually. I want to hear more. Yeah, never delay gratitude. And that means, you know, if you're grateful or thankful for anything, be sure and tell people. Mm. You know, be sure and tell people, like, I don't care where I'm at, what's going on. Whenever I get off the phone with my parents, my wife, my kids, or whatnot, it's always, I love you. You know, those times when you say you're going to tell somebody something in the morning or something like that, like, you just never... You absolutely never know what's gonna happen, so never delay gratitude. And and that was a coach who said that to you. How did how did that apply to sport? And why how did why did he introduce? Because that's yeah. so interesting to get from a like a, a basketball coach. Yeah, so I talk about Coach Prosser yeah. a lot in the yeah, book. Yeah, of course. Because yeah. he's he's one of the most, three most influential men in my life, and he just had all of these sayings. Right, never delay gratitude. If you can't be on time, be early. Uh, don't be a two to four guy. Be a four to two guy. And it was just all these different things. And the reason that never delay gratitude thing, how it related to sports was, it's hard to win a game, right? It's hard to win one game, let alone make it to the playoffs. Like I coached the other night when we clinched to make it to the playoffs in the locker room, he just told everybody, he said, listen, I'm grateful for you guys. We always talk about gratitude. It's a lot of teams that's going home and going on vacation, but you know, don't take it for granted that you get a chance to play in the playoffs. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I love that. And I think a lot of young athletes who are listening, or if you have kids who are young athletes, like that's great advice because often that kind of softer touch is is missed. Like you don't think it's there. Sometimes. Yeah, but, but when I say never delay gratitude, yeah. I also mean for like kids to your parents. Like yeah. when I'm at my basketball camps, I always make all the kids stand up and turn around and tell their parents thanks. Because like I said in the book, my dad spent his entire 401k on me and my brother playing travel basketball. Mm. So that's where these kids, they get to go do all these camps and all this stuff. And don't delay gratitude. Tell your parents thank you because every kid is not getting that opportunity. Yeah. I, actually, I want to I wanna take a side note on that because one of the things I was blown away by in your journey is just how much purpose and giving back and service is such a big part of how your your foundation, the way it's set up, your... When you walk through the, you know, the the murder of and the death of George Floyd and Black Lives Matter and then how you're dealing with it in the bubble and of course with your role at the time and you talk about how like you changed the messaging three times. I went from peace yeah. to to I forgot what the other say one was. Say her name. Yeah, and say I think it was equality. Equality, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And 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 you shift through it. And I was just thinking, like, there's just so much intention in your life with all the work that you've chosen to do. Uh, what, what's what been kind of like a meaningful fruit or result that you've seen that has really... It's a, it's a lot of different things. And I'm fortunate to have an amazing team that works with me or whatnot, because obviously I'm dealing with a lot of different things on a given, given day and trying to be the best athlete that I can be. But they're constantly bringing different things, uh, saying, hey, would you like to support this? Or could you do this? And mm -hmm. Uh, I'm always trying to as much as I can. And I think the most valuable thing that I have is time. So even if it's before a game or after a game, giving a young kid an opportunity to watch me warm up or taking a picture with him and just giving them your undivided attention mm. for, for five minutes is one of the most valuable things that you can do with anybody. Yeah, absolutely. And I just, I'm, I want to read this out because it's so, it's so powerful. So last March, Chris was the only athlete appointed to President Biden's advisory board on historically black colleges and universities. And, and that's been, I mean, that, that's incredible that you've become a, a spokesperson and a champion for, for that. Is there some of the work there that's resonated or some stories that you think? Oh, man. Um, it's probably so many. Yeah, I mean, well, we, we got a lot of different things. What we've done is, uh, me and my brother a few years ago, and then Carmen actually did it too, we went to this business class at Harvard with uh, Anita Elbers, um, a BIMS class, business education, management, sports, I think. And after going to that class at Harvard, we were like, why isn't this curriculum or course offered at HBCUs? And we got to work 
and Anita helped with it. And now we have that course at a few different HBCUs. Wow. Right. So just always trying to figure out how we can make some type of impact. Equality again. Exactly. Equal access. Yeah. yeah. Equal access yeah. to education. It's incredible. I'm glad, I'm glad we went there actually. Uh, second question. What is the worst advice you've ever heard or received? Worst advice? <laughs> uh, that cheese tastes good. <laughs> cheese is disgusting. Like seriously, I've never had a cheeseburger, <laughs> macaroni and cheese, none of that. It's disgusting. <laughs> I thought you do my cheeses and money. And no, so the, no, no, no. You're being literal. Yeah, you're being literal. Yeah, yeah, literal. Okay, yeah. literal. So you don't like cheese? At all. At all? No. no Not even have. on pizza? No, 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 no. I'm cool. No cheesy fries? No. Oh, no. Okay. Hey, right. no. Okay, this is good and My to brother, know. when we used to get home from school, he used to go in the refrigerator and get the Block of cheese? What is that? I don't even know. Oh, that, that string cheese kind of like, I think I know what you're talking about, yeah. I don't know. He used to have to take plastic off the side and yeah, eat yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm doing nothing but putting mucus all in his body. Nasty. <laughs> also, uh, question number three. How would you define your current purpose? You know, basketball and athletic, that's that's what I do. Not necessarily all of who I am, but just just trying to help make a difference in, in different aspects of life, uh, whether it be HBCUs, whether it be health and wellness. I think that's been a big thing that I've become passionate about the past four or five years is trying to figure out how to make some of these health things more accessible, mm -hmm. right? And make people more aware. Like I'm always curious about this, um, that, whatever it may be. I'm so curious about water and the things that people are eating and all these different type things and trying to make sure that other people become aware like I am. And the other biggest purpose is whatever I have to do for my family, mm -hmm. right? Whatever I have to do, do for my family, especially my wife and kids, is just trying to figure out how I can continue to pour into them. Question number four, uh, what, what's your reaction to the title Point God? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, the, the Point God thing has been... It's crazy. I don't even know when it started. I don't even know when I when it started, but uh, it's a privilege, right? Like a, a honor, basically, that people see you playing the game the right way. Now it ain't some like worshiping thing or whatnot, but uh, I get really like kind of shy and bashful when people say that or whatnot. But uh, it's it's cool to be even in that consideration and playing for as long as I played. It's dope. Uh, fifth and final question, if you could create, we ask this to every guest who's ever been on the show, if you could create one law that everyone in the world had to follow, what would it be? Take your time. Ooh wee. One law yeah. that everybody in the world that had everyone to, in the world had to follow, what would it be? And take your time. There's no reason. Oh, that's, that's, everybody got to get them guns up, man. <laughs> everybody. Everybody come turn them in. Everybody come turn them in. Everybody. So if we got some beef or something like that, or somebody got to do something, you got to fight it out. You got to fight it out. <laughs> I don't know. That was the first thing that came yeah, to my head. Yeah, yeah. 